Seven new COVID-19 cases in the Panhandle were confirmed over the weekend, with patients ranging from their teens to their 90s. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, Unified Command confirmed seven new COVID-19 cases over the weekend, bringing the region's number of total confirmed cases to 86. On Friday evening, PPHD announced that three Scottsbluff County females, two in their teens and one in their 20s, tested positive. And on Sunday evening, four additional cases were confirmed, including three additional Scottsbluff County females, one in her 30s, one in her 40s, and one in her 90s, as well as one Cheyenne County male in his 40s. PPHD also confirms that six cases have been deemed recovered, five here in Scottsbluff County and one in Morrill County. Through Sunday evening, 54 of the Panhandle's 86 cases have recovered, leaving 32 active cases in the Panhandle, including 22 in Scottsbluff County, 6 in Morrill County, 3 in Cheyenne County, and 1 in Dawes County. Looking at the statewide case information now, as Douglas County continues to be the hardest hit area in Nebraska, over the past three days there have been more than 400 additional positive cases in Douglas County. DHHS is reporting that an additional 10 COVID-19 related deaths occurred over the weekend, bringing the statewide total to 123. More than 67,000 tests have been administered, with 10,348 of those coming back positive. And Governor Pete Ricketts says Nebraska is going to require long-term care centers to develop formal plans outlining how they'll keep the coronavirus from spreading among the vulnerable residents who live in those facilities. Facilities such as nursing homes and assisted living centers will have to submit plans to state regulators explaining how they intend to identify ill people and deal with visitors for the rest of the year. They'll also have to discuss their disinfection protocols. The announcement comes as state officials scrambled to keep the virus from spreading among long-term care facilities whose residents are generally older and have underlying health problems. Well, coming up after the break should be a fairly warm start to the work week with temperatures expected to reach the low to mid 80s. Bill's got your full week forecast right after this on KNEB.TV News. Local lending. We're here for you from start to finish. Keeping money in our economy. Supporting local jobs. Giving back to our community. Investing in entrepreneurship. Making our quiet towns a destination. At Platte Valley Bank, we support local because we are local. Start your spring right with compliments for you and your home. Compliments wants to help you get dressed for all your spring events. Whether you're the mother of the bride, at your son's graduation, or looking for a great dress for a special event, Compliments has got a look for you. While at Compliments, look for a new style or give it as a gift. With great new home decor, now is the perfect time to spruce up your home. Compliments for you and your home. 1708 Broadway, beautiful downtown Scotts Bluff. This is KNEB.TV weather from the KNEB Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. Going to be dealing with clear to partly cloudy skies tonight, some breezes early, and then I think winds will die down a little bit, only to pick back up by midday tomorrow and another breezy day in store for us. So breezy at times tonight early, then tomorrow again, and then we're really keeping an eye on Wednesday when thunderstorms are going to develop. Some will be strong to severe. It looks like a quieter holiday weekend coming our way and relatively nice, although not as warm as it's going to be uh, tomorrow or even Wednesday for that matter. Right on the button for our low yesterday it was 43, our high was 72. 
Uh, nothing uh, in the rain gauge the last 24 hours, although we're up to 229 for the month. Uh, that's about an inch above normal, and for the year we're at 449, about a half an inch or so below normal. Temperatures are mild right now. We've got temps well into the 80s uh, here across uh, Wyoming, or sorry, Colorado on the front range there well into the 80s. 70s to near 80 here in our area. 60s uh, on the eastern portions of the state. We've even got 70s and 80s in the higher country in Colorado or in Wyoming now. 72 right now in Alliance, 74 in Ogallala. There's an 87 degree reading right now in Wheatland. Winds are out of the south, southeast. They're blowing at about 15 to 20, uh, even up to 22, 23 miles an hour in a few locations. So it is kind of gusty out there. All in all, though, it is fairly quiet here across the high country. Severe weather threat is off to our east tonight. We don't have anything to worry about in our area for tonight. Now, that's not the same for tomorrow. As you can see, we do have a marginal risk of severe storms here in our area, mainly uh, right along the Wyoming and Nebraska border down into portions of Colorado. We're not going to see very many storms tomorrow, but if we do see one, uh, it could be strong in some areas. The day we're keeping an eye on, though, is for Wednesday. We already have a slight risk of severe storms from really the Nebraska Panhandle, far eastern portions of Wyoming. This is going to be east of I-25, then all the way up into portions of North Dakota and Montana. It's a narrow band there, but that's where we think the best instability. There will even be enough shear that we could be dealing with a couple of isolated tornadoes around the region on Wednesday. We don't expect there, everybody's going to get severe weather, but we do see some supercells developing Wednesday afternoon and evening that could be capable of large hail and damaging winds. And again, can't rule out an isolated tornado or two. For tonight, though, it's quiet here on the weather front. Clear skies for the most part and quiet conditions. Just some breezy air or breezy conditions. Winds start to move in or clouds start to move in from the east late tonight. Lows are going to fall down into the upper 40s and low 50s here across the area. For tomorrow, then we're back at it with sunshine across the high plains. Very nice day. Now, late tomorrow afternoon, we'll start to see a few clouds build up and an isolated thunderstorm or two tries to roll across the area. Again, if one develops tomorrow, can't rule out a strong to severe storm. They'll end by tomorrow night and into Wednesday morning and we'll reset the stage for what's going to be probably an active Wednesday here across the region. High temperatures tomorrow back into the 80s for almost all of us. A couple of areas very near that 80 degree mark, but most of us well into the 80s. And precip's going to be light, primarily off to our west and uh, in eastern portions of Wyoming. And again, very light from those hit or miss showers and storms. So for tonight, breezy at times, clear, lows down around 53. For tomorrow, a mostly sunny day. It'd be beautiful without the winds. There'll be about 15 to 25, 86 your high. And our seven day forecast, certainly Wednesday is the active day with thunderstorms developing in the afternoon, some severe and uh, windy again on Wednesday. The winds calm down then for the rest of the week. Highs Thursday in the upper mid 70s, near 80 again Friday. Saturday back into the upper 70s and then Sunday into Monday temps near that 70 to 75 degree mark uh, for Memorial Day. So cooling down to about normal as we go into Memorial Day itself. But most of the three day weekend again, we're not completely dry. We're putting 20 percent chances of showers and storms out there, but primarily it's going to be a quiet uh, Memorial Day weekend and albeit uh, pretty seasonable and comfortable here across the area. This is Brad, president of Allo Communication. At Allo and across the nation, the way we connect is changing and growing. Our connections to family, colleagues, and the community become more meaningful each day. Allo's fiber network was built for growth. We have the bandwidth to handle the changing needs of today, tomorrow, and for years to come. We'll continue to invest in the towns we serve, in our team, and in our technology to be ready for the future. We build our network for you, our neighbors, and together we'll stay connected. May is Beef Month, a time to celebrate the high quality beef products that are raised by farmers and ranchers right here in Nebraska. With over 5 million cattle fed and marketed each year, Nebraska is the number one cattle feeding state in the country. From steaks and roasts to ground beef and kebabs, Nebraska's beef producers take pride in raising safe, wholesome products that end up on dinner plates around the world. Join the beef community by celebrating Beef Month with your favorite beef meal tonight. Beef, it's what's for dinner in Nebraska. Sponsored by Trimley Rock and Roosevelt Public Power Districts and Z&W Mill. 
As farmers make plans to return to their fields for spring planting, we urge farmers to be alert to the dangers of working near overhead power lines. Electricity is one of the most overlooked, yet deadly hazards of working on a farm. Beware of increased height when loading and transporting equipment on trailers. Avoid raising the arms of planters or cultivators or raising truck beds near power lines. So let's take extra caution this spring planting season. This message brought to you by Chimney Rock Public Power District, your touchstone energy partner, the power of human connections. This year, W2 means we double. Reganis Auto Center will double your down payment on any pre-owned vehicle on their lot. Turn $500 into $1,000. Turn $1,500 into $3,000. Use that money to get out of your lease or a vehicle you owe too much on or to lower your monthly payment. For a limited time only, double your down payment only at Reganis Auto Center on East Overland and East 27th Street in Scotts Bluff. Your volume discount dealer. Welcome back. With this year's National Law Enforcement Memorial Ceremonies pushed into the virtual world, the Nebraska State Patrol has honored Trooper Jerry Smith and other fallen law enforcement officers in a video featured on the Nebraska State Patrol Facebook page. Speaking in front of the Nebraska Law Enforcement Memorial, Superintendent Colonel John Boldick said it is unfortunate that current circumstances prevented an in-person ceremony to honor Trooper Smith's legacy and career. We are able to come here to the memorial in Grand Island and see that his name is etched in granite. And it's an opportunity for us to reflect and to thank him for his sacrifice and to say we will never forget. Trooper Smith died in a fatal traffic accident in Morrill County last June at the age of 51. Boldick says there will be an opportunity in the coming months to honor him along with members of his families with an in-person ceremony. Well, the Oregon Trail Days Board of Directors has announced that they are considering scenarios for the 2020 celebration so they can comply with directed health measures later this summer. Chairman Tracy Bentley says this year's OT Days celebration will look different this year, and the board is working on finalizing plans on what exactly can and cannot be done this year. And with all the uncertainty surrounding Oregon Trail Days, KNEB has announced that the Sawyer Brown concert has been postponed until July 10th of 2021. After much discussion with PPHD and Gearing City officials, it became apparent that this concert would not have been able to be pulled off with proper social distancing and safety measures likely to still be in place. All tickets purchased for the July 2020 show will be valid for the 2021 date and refund options are also available. Well, coming up after the break, Chris Cottrell will be in with the latest from the FNBO Sports Desk. I love that right after this on KNEB.TV News. On April 15, 1924, West Nebraska Methodist Episcopal Hospital, the region's first modern hospital, opened in downtown Scotts Bluff. The goal was to provide the care residents needed close to home, and it's never changed. For 95 years, we've continued to provide exceptional health care for generations of families throughout our region as a community hospital, a regional referral center, and a level 2 trauma center. Thank you for trusting your health care to Regional West Medical Center. Are you looking for the perfect place to hold a wedding, family reunion, holiday office party, or business meeting? Well, look no further. The Hampton Inn and Suites Hotel and Conference Center is just the place for you. We're a full-service banquet facility that can host up to 400 of your guests. Stop in and see our spacious open concept meeting rooms and begin planning your special event or family gathering today. Let us do the work for you so you can enjoy your guests. For personal service, stop by the Hampton Inn and Suites front desk. Home buying is filled with decisions. Neighborhood, floor plan, fenced yard. Make one choice that's easy. Start with FNBO first. We'll guide you home. Home buying is filled with decisions. Square feet, fixer upper, room to grow. Make one choice that's easy. Start with FNBO first. We'll guide you home. Now, sports from the FNBO Sports Desk. FNBO, the great big small bank. Well, little by little, we are starting to get some things back in the world of sports. Yesterday, a return to normalcy 
for the Rural Radio Network with afternoon racing for the NASCAR Cup Series as drivers and crews were back at it for the first time in over two months. Kevin Harvick able to take the checkered flag at the 400-mile event at Darlington Raceway, a milestone win for Harvick, his 50th career victory on the circuit. Short turnaround for the drivers as they'll hold another series event, Cup Series event coming up on Wednesday night at Darlington, and we'll have it for you on 94-1, the brand starting with pre-race activities. Pre-game show starts at 4.30. With the start of youth baseball and softball on the horizon here in a couple of weeks, the 23 Club has sign-ups for baseball continuing throughout this week. You can get your son, age 4 to 15, registered at the website you see listed. Practices can start on June 1st with league games beginning on June 22nd. Similarly, the Scotts Bluff Softball Association is moving forward with their season as well, and they've extended registration to the end of this week. That'll be the 22nd. Registration forms can be picked up and then drop back off at High Plains Spas. And if you have any questions, then contact the email address listed there. And here's something new and fun from WNCC. The school has announced a new video series, Workout Wednesdays, beginning this Wednesday and running through June 10th. All four of those Wednesdays, the workout video, which can be done from home, will go live at 10 in the morning on both the WNCC Athletics Facebook page and their YouTube channel. Well, here's where it gets real saucy. These video workouts will be led by Cougar basketball players Connor McCracken, Josiah Diolis, and former player Martin Rube, along with plenty of special guests along the way. Definitely looking forward to that. That is the latest today from here at the FNBO TV Sports Desk. I'm Chris Cottrell. Ryan's back with more right after this here on KNEB.TV. Small business, you're the engine that makes our communities thrive. That's why we're with you, providing more for you, so you can focus on what matters most. Small business, you're the engine that makes our communities thrive. That's why we're with you, providing more for you, so you can earn more, save more, and do more. For the past 44 years, Platte Valley Vacuum and Sewing has been serving the Wyobrasca area. That's quite a long time. At Platte Valley Vacuum and Sew, you'll find quality sewing machines, quilting and embroidery machines, even sergers from name brands such as Foff and Baby Lock, both known for their well-made machinery. Keep in mind you'll receive one-on-one -on -one lessons with your machine purchase. Platte Valley Vacuum and Sew also offers a fine selection of 100% cotton quilting fabrics and a great selection of threads and notions to assist you in most any quilting or embroidery project you might have. For all your sewing machine quilting needs, stop by Platte Valley Vacuum and Sew, downtown Scotts Bluff. When it comes to helping local folks with the loans and financial advice they need, we don't horse around. Our only goal is to help you and your family achieve your financial goals with the right loans and savings products. So if you want to bank with people that care about you and your financial needs, stop by or give us a call. First State Bank. We're big on you. Member FDIC. Online at fsbcentral.com. Well, let's take a look what's happening on today's community calendar.
That's a look at today's community calendar, brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. Fly United Airlines, operated by SkyWest with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. United is dedicated to going the extra mile for you with daily flights to and from Denver, along with a commitment to excellent service. Reserve your flight today, and remember, United miles can be earned and redeemed with your flights. While at the airport, stop and enjoy authentic Italian food at Roma Italian Restaurant. Plus, Hertz Thrifty Car Rental is there for your car rental needs. Make life easier, relax, and get on board with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. At Platte Valley Bank, we want you to plan for tomorrow Will you enjoy today. With our personalized trust and estate planning services, our trust services can help you do just that. When it comes to estate planning, you should seek professional help. And when you do, you should have confidence in the financial institution you choose to handle your trust. At Platte Valley Bank, we pride ourselves in keeping our trust operations local and serving our friends and neighbors. We offer a highly personalized, full line of personal trust and estate planning. Give us a call today and see how our trust services can help you. And finally tonight, the Gehring City Council has approved Crossroad Cooperative's $1.6 million request in tax increment financing to expand their current facility. During last week's council meeting, City Engineer Annie Folk says Crossroads wants to purchase the plot of land directly east of their operations, which would include building a new rail spur on the property. They currently have a rail spur that is no longer in use, but they would be adding to that to provide some areas where Train cars could be parked. That actually would be the part that would be closest to the residential neighborhood. But then that rail spur would extend through the crossroads property and we would have the ability to connect to that for the property north of the irrigation canal for future development. The plan also falls in line with the city's comprehensive plan and the project already has $500,000 earmarked from Gehring's LB840 committee and $100,000 in a grant from the State Department of Transportation for the rail spur. Mayor Tony Kaufman says this project is a win-win for both the city and Crossroads. This is a great project uh, that's a great private, great, great example of a private public partnership uh, to bring some added value to our community. Uh, we are very excited, I think, as a community to uh, welcome Crossroads Cooperative Expansion Opportunity in the community. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you here next time.